In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how you can use Autodesk Inventor to be, perform a deflection and stress analysis on a cantilever beam. A cantilever beam is a beam which is mounted at one end into the wall, it's fixed, and has a load at the other end. So to demonstrate this, what we're going to do is model the beam. It's going to be a 2x4, which is 6 feet long. So I'm going to click on New, select Standard, and from here, I'm going to go and create a 2D sketch, select the XY plane, and using the rectangle tool, select the origin, and then type 1.5 for the width, tab to get to the height. Oops, let's get back here. Uh, 1.5, 1, 1 tab 3.5 for the height. Press Enter, hit the front view. Okay, we can see that we have the correct dimension. I finished the sketch. Now I'm going to extrude and for distance I can put in 6 space FT. Autodesk Inventor understands units Okay, when you're typing them into a field. So there's our 2 by 4 beam. I'm going to save this before we do anything and I'm going to call this uh, demo beam. Okay, with that saved, what we'll do next is we will go over to Environment. This is where you can basically uh, do the stress analysis. So click on Stress Analysis, and as with most applications in Autodesk Inventor, in the ribbon, you work your way from left to right. So we're going to start off with Create Simulation. This is a static simulation, so we're going to leave everything as it is and press OK. And then the next thing we're going to do is assign materials. Um, so we're going to click on assign material, go to the materials button, and this is where we can get the material library. Click on any name and type a W, that'll scroll you down. I'm going to select oak. Now I'm going to double click and what this just did is it put the material as part of the document. Now that it's in there, I'm going to go and modify it by clicking on the physical tab. Later on, we're going to do some hand calculations to see what the results of the deflection of the analysis versus some calculated results are. But to do that, we're going to, to make those calculations simple and appropriate for high school students, we're going to change the behavior of the material from orthotropic, which means has different properties in each of its directions, to isotropic, which means the properties are uniform. So we'll keep uh, the material to this. Here is a new Young's modulus of 1.35 times 10 to the 6 psi. That's going to be appropriate. We're going to use that later when we do some hand calculations. So I press OK here. It's now part of the document. To assign it, the easiest thing is to close it, then open it up again, and now when you click on it, the material that we modified has now been assigned to our part. Okay, so we have that. Press OK from here. Our next thing is to apply constraints. This is an object in space and forces are going to be applied to it, so we need to know what parts are not going to move and which ends can. So a cantilever beam, one end is fixed, so I click on that and I'm going to select the end surface, click there and press OK. This end, every part of this beam has now been told it cannot move. I'm going to spin the beam around using the navigation cube. I'll zoom into this end and we're going to apply a force by selecting the end face here. Now normally it would put a force that's perpendicular to the area. We want this going down so I'm going to use vector components and select the Y component and type in a negative 100 uh, LB force. Okay, So we have to apply the units to it. Press OK and now you can see we have a force that's been applied downward. Okay, we can spin this around. Okay, once we're going on to this, our next thing is the mesh. We are utilizing a, a technique called finite element analysis. And what that does is it takes a shape and breaks it up into a bunch of uh, simpler components that can be solved. This is a very simple uh, shape which we can hand calculate, which we're going to do later on at some point. So, uh, But the whole point of finite element analysis is to be able to look at shapes that would be too complicated or you wouldn't have formulas to know how to deal with that shape. So we can draw the shape, we can apply the material, we can indicate the constraints and the forces and get a stress analysis in here. To do that, we need to break this part up into a bunch of pieces, and that's what the mesh will do. So there's an auto mesher in this. We just clicked Mesh View, 
And now we have broken this into a bunch of tetrahedrons. Okay, so we're good to go on that. To actually solve it and see how this is going to work, we click the simulate button, solve. And it says you have one run, so hit the run button. And now you can see some results, oh, they're all nicely color-coded. The default is going to be something called von Mises stress. Von Mises stress is a way of combining three-dimensional stresses into a single value, which can then be compared to yield stress or ultimate stress for determining if a part is suitable for a given material to be able to work on that. Uh, you can go and open up the stresses tab and actually look at the different stresses, the stresses in the x direction. This, anything that's xx is a uniform uh, normal stress. So xx, yy, zz. Uh, you notice we have a maximum von Mies stress of 2.37 right here. In the zz direction, which is how this bending would be, double click on that, 2.37 maximum stress. Notice here we've got a uh, compression uh, tension in the top, compression in the bottom, so we're seeing positive to negative. Von Mises are always positive, so uh, you're going to see the same coloration top and bottom being able to work from there in this. Uh, if you would like to see what the displacement, how this part is bending, double click on displacement and that changes your result and this is showing us that at the very end we have a deflection of 1.725 inches. Okay, and it's red here. To kind of bring home how this part is bending, especially if it's a complex part, you can click on the Animate tab, or Animate command, and press Play, and it will do a variation showing you how the part is bending okay, as it's, uh, the load is increasing and deflecting from there. Okay, and of course, after you're finished with this, uh, you can hit Finish Stress Analysis. That concludes this video on how to perform a stress analysis and deflection analysis in Autodesk Inventor using finite element analysis.